Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of this multi-part series of learning how to paint the seascape. Last episode, we learned how to uh, block in all of the different forms and shapes of the uh, seascape. Uh, we drew it in, we blocked it in, we got all of our values and stuff pretty much correct. Uh, and now it's time for the first painting. Um, and I'm going to show you how I retouch some things and rework some things to bring more detail into the work. Hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining me once again in this second part of learning to paint the seascape. So, like before, uh, we went through a few different things about how I approach my painting. This whole episode is just about refining what we did last episode. Again, I'm pre-mixing my oil colors, well, the colors that I can see that I'm going to need, getting them ready to paint. And uh, here, because this is second painting, um, I've left everything to sit and dry. Uh, right now, you're going to see me oil up the surface of where I'm about to paint. It's um, it's actually called oiling out. Um, so once the surface is really nice and dry to the touch, um, and you want to rework that surface, get a little bit of um, linseed oil or whatever type of medium you're working with. I use linseed oil, and and just just sort of rub that onto the surface where you want to be working on. Not too much. Uh, you don't want to saturate it too much, but a nice light coat so it's nice and uh, easy to push the paint around, and and you can use this, the bottom layer. To, to blend with the second layer that you're painting on top of. Because that's how I like to paint. I like to paint uh, with the first layer, well, with one layer leading up to the next layer. I find that that's like a really great way to paint and your paintings come out so much more vibrant and uh, so much more alive when you do it that way. Gonna be using that long flat brush to get all those big chunks of colors down that I really wanna get down and recorrect that uh, first layer I'll add a lot more detail to, to the sky as well. That's the whole point of the second painting, is to just start to start on the process of refining the painting rather than um, blocking in things. Because last episode, we blocked everything in, made sure we knew and lined up where everything's supposed to go. Uh, this episode, all about refinement. So you're going to hear me talk about just refine, refine, refine all through this episode. <laughs> But uh, that's all it's really going to be about, really. It's just refining your work and how we go about that. So you can see me start to really get down a lot of surface area with that long flat. And because I've got that oil, um, linseed oil washed over the um, dried surface, it makes it a whole lot easier to reuse the, the first layer painting with this layer so that I can really mix and blend with that first layer into this layer so I don't have to really start from scratch at all. Uh, it sort of works in unison together. It's a nice, it's a really nice tool that you can try and use in your own paintings. I, I find it really helpful. Yeah, like I said before, it comes out so much vibrant. You can see the way I'm using my brush here, really holding it back on the handle, keeping it nice and loose. Uh, nice and wispy sort of feel of the uh, of the clouds uh, and and sky and the way the sky is moving. Uh, I try and keep when I'm painting the sky. I try and keep a sense of that wispy air sort of feel. So I keep really nice and light with my brush. Uh, keep really nice and um, strokey and patterny with my brush in a way that represents the sky. So when when you go to paint things, don't think of things as that's just that object. Think of things in a way that it feels as well. I find, for me, it helps so much more when I think of things in the way that it feels, in the way that I, when I'm out there painting, I can see it and I can, and I'm in it, and I can feel the way that the air is moving around me, and so that that sort of makes me paint in that way. Uh, when I'm in the studio, however, I don't have that luxury. Obviously, I have to sort of synthesize that idea that I've had in my head from many hours of painting on plein air, which is something I really recommend for anybody that's doing landscape painting, is go paint plein air, go paint plein air, please. It's the best thing you're gonna do for your, for your landscape painting and for your painting in general, honestly. Uh, you know, I, I feel like it's helped me phenomenally in all different ways. 
but uh, that's a, that, that'll probably be a whole different video if I go talking into that. <laughs> so this section that I'm painting on right now that you can see me doing, that you've been seeing me doing for a little bit here, this was actually the cloud bank in the distance. Uh, and this part is what I really enjoyed about this painting is just painting this cloud bank here and really building it up. And this is where that bottom layer comes into play uh, and ha really helps me out. Now that I've already mapped it out, put down some values on top of it, I can rework it and work it into that bottom layer. Not completely because the bottom layer is tr dry, obviously, but because I've got that linseed oil down on that on that uh, dry layer, it really helps that I can use that colors and vibrancy on that first layer and pull that into or make it seem like it's pulling into this second painting of this layer. You see, I'm still using that, lo that long flat. Um, I'm still going to be using flats. I don't move on to rounds until the very, very last sort of painting layers. The flats keep it nice and blocky for you. Just you want to get less and less blocky. And so you go smaller and smaller flats. That's what I find helps with when I'm painting landscapes. I find that's the um, best approach for me anyways. So I'm doing, actually when I'm mixing, while I'm um, editing this, you see me doing a mix of uh, speed up painting, uh, where I've sped up the video and where I've just played it in normal speed. You can see the way that uh, I thought it would be really helpful for you guys to see both sped up process so you can see things all come together really quickly and get a really good sense of how things are coming together as well as playing in real time and you can see the way I'm using my brush strokes and, and my brush handling and the way that I'm applying paint. Um, so le let me know what you like better in the comments and um, you know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do a mix of both. That's what I like to see when I'm watching videos is a mix of both. I, I don't really like watching sped up painting videos because it makes me want to just skip to the end. I'm just like, well, get, get it over with. <laughs> I think that playing in real time really provides a lot of value for you guys. But let me know what you think. Um, I'm doing a mix of both because I don't want you to sit here for like hours and hours watching me go through each individual stroke. I mean, you might like that and I can definitely provide that sort of video. If you like that, let me know in the comments. So you can see me work and rework the surface, uh, which is really interesting about seeing me work this surface in a sped up way. Do you get to see the overall process, not just uh, stroke by stroke, but you get to see a grand uh, shot of everything. So you see me working the surface into each other, which is a lot different to how the first painting was, where I was putting down blocks of color, uh, color in ways that sit next to each other, in ways that uh, um, is representative of the actual colors and and the uh, subject in the space on which I'm gonna paint. So this this second painting really you get to see a real sense of it all here in the sped up. Is that it's a whole lot of working into each other and blending and uh, lots of. Uh, reworking and taking on from the layer below as you can see me work the sky there as well now that the sky i feel happy enough to move on uh, from that second painting of the sky i'm going to move on to again that sort of hill um, mountain range sort of bush bushland area of the painting with all the trees and the foliage uh, and that'll be that'll be the second half of this video um, the the second painting of the water it took a lot longer, so I'm gonna split that off into second second painting part two kind of video. I don't know what yet exactly, but uh, look out for that. So the water I'm gonna put that in a separate video, just because it ended up being it was gonna be uh, 35 minutes, 40 minutes long, and I was like, oh, I want to try and keep it around the 25 uh, 25 minute mark. I feel like that's a very nice easy to consume time but if if you wouldn't mind a 40 minute video or an hour video or a two hour video or a real time hour video you know uh, multi-part hour um, let me know what you'd like to see and I I can do I can do whatever you guys want to see <laughs> that'd be great 
again, you can see me pre-mixing all these colors up, uh, getting everything ready that um, so I don't have to focus on oh, oh, what color is that, what color is that. Oh, I've already got it here on the palette because I pre-mixed that before I started painting. Get a fair amount of color down mixed on your palette. That way you don't have to worry about stopping, starting, remix, you know, refill those colors or whatever. Uh, really helps out and stuff. Um, I'm pulling from, I don't have a very wide range of a palette. I keep my palette very nice and tight, nice and limited. Uh, not too limited that I, you know, can't mix up a whole range of colors, but just limited enough that I have complete control over the colors that I'm mixing. Uh, way easier than I would say if I had some weird, crazy, off the spectrum type of colors that uh, you can only buy from weird shops. <laughs> so I like to keep my uh, colors nice and simple. I, I mix with phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, uh, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, uh, light red. I don't know what it's called, what type of light red it is. It's just a light red. Uh, from Art Spectrum, and that's about it, really. And white, uh, I have some interchangeable ones, but the, yeah, that's about the main colors. Again, you can see me oiling up that surface, not too much. I had to actually wipe that down because there was a lot of oil put down onto that one. You just want to keep it a really nice, clean, uh, thin layer of oil, um, just enough that it's nice and workable on that surface for you. Okay, so you see that I've actually switched up my brushes to a smaller flat here. Uh, actually, you're going to see me switch over, if this isn't already the footage now, into back into my proper lens. So that's fantastic. We've made it back to that sort of footage. <laughs> so you can see that great footage. Um, so the next couple of episodes is all going to be a nice, clean footage going forward. So, yeah, glad to announce that. <laughs> but um, anyways, back to the what I was saying about the... Um, paintbrush here. I've gone back, uh, still using the flat, you know, I'm not onto the rounds yet. Uh, this is just a smaller flat for this this painting part here. Uh, this smaller flat is still a long flat, just uh, I'm not too sure how small it is. I think it's a... Uh... So that smaller flat is actually a 2 Rosemary & Co Ivory Long Flat, number 2. Um, so that's the that's the um, small flat I'm using in this this picture, this um, painting part here. Again, lots of refinement. I don't want to go as light what is in the reference photo yet. I want to save that um, tonal best for last, just so it doesn't blow a lot of my things out of proportion. I find it's a lot easier to judge things without having that highest light right there. Definitely put your darkest dark in though. I find the darkest dark helps quite a lot, but that lightest light, I don't know what it is, maybe it's just me, I find that lightest light just, it just goes over the top and I just can't do anything with that. I think that uh, lightest light, um, keeping that light uh, real dull makes that final touch of uh, your highest tone um, oh so much more brighter uh, on top of those already worked tones. It's uh, yeah, that's why it's important to hold your tonal best for last. So the way that I'm handling my brush here, still nice and blocky, um, but a bit more firmer than what I'm using, than how I was painting the sky a minute ago. It's a bit more precise, a bit more uh, rigid, um, just trying to get those, the general sense of the ideas of the trees and the way that morning sunrise is hitting those trees, uh, the way that it's um, sweeping up that mountainside there is what I'm keeping in mind while I'm painting that, that this section of the painting. I've also edited the video in a way that um, I'm skipping every time I go down to the palette. <laughs> so you might think, oh, he's got a lot of paint on that uh, paintbrush there. It's not, not actually true. I'm actually going down to palette. I'm just skipping through that a lot. <laughs> um, again, when I rework these, um, the second layer, I'm still going from darkest to lightest. I, f I, I still find that that's the best approach when I'm doing this uh, landscape sort of paintings or any sort of paintings really uh, in oil paint. 
when you go darkest to lightest. Obviously watercolor, you don't want to do that. But uh, while we're using oil paint here, even on the second second painting layer, it's still really handy to go dark to light. Um, because when you put that dark uh, stroke down, you can pull a light stroke through it. Whereas if you put a light stroke down, pulling that dark stroke through the light is a bit more uncontrollable and you actually tend to muddy up the darker tone rather than the light. Uh, and, well, you, you muddy up both of them really, but uh, it doesn't look quite right. Um, so that's, that's a handy technique while you're thinking about uh, approaching your paintings is, is put that dark down and then put the light on top of that and pull that through instead of doing that in reverse. It, uh, it helps me out so much and I find myself doing that all the time. Even these little highlights that I'm doing here aren't exactly my lightest light. That Well, they're, they're not my lightest light, that's for sure. Uh, actually, I think they're a bit too light than what I need them to be now. And in that third, um, third painting that I do of this section, I actually darken it down a lot more so that when those lightest lights come in, they look really nice and vibrant and they're not taken away by these lighter undertones. Um, so, so yeah, that's kind of what I end up doing there. Um, but that's why we paint in layers, so you can always reflect on that layer gone by and uh, look at the layer you're painting now and think, okay, I got this information here. What can I do to make this look a lot better? Coming down a bit more, uh, working on that sand at the moment. That sand in that morning sunlight is a lot more orange. Uh, well, <laughs> Australian sand is so orange uh, compared to compared to a lot of other beaches around the world. Um, we got some white sandy beaches, that's for sure. But a lot of our sand is <laughs> bright, bright orange. You know, we're a sunburnt country, that's for sure. putting a bit of white through it, but I'm not putting straight titanium white onto it. Um, I've got a little bit of the yellow ochre and the cadmium through it. Um, and then I'm also pulling that white through that uh, paint that I've already put down there. Um, and so it's, it's, uh, it's taking away some of that tonal value of that white, so it's not so strong. It's uh, actually taking it down a couple of notches so that it's still manageable on the painting. I've noticed a few spots in the trees that I want to fix up a bit more. Um, so I'm coming back up to them, retouching all those. Just trying to get a lot more of that sense of form into these trees. Um, as you can see, still really nice and blocky. Uh, that's how it should be at this stage. Uh, don't judge yourself too hard, especially only in the second page, uh, second painting. You know, really value the lessons that you're learning from the painting. Um, don't overvalue the painting itself. Value the lessons more than the painting. And uh, that's how you get that right positive mindset to not be so consumed by the way that your painting's looking now. And think about the way your painting's gonna look uh, after 10 more hours of touch-ups, not how it's looking now. So don't, don't put yourself down too much, uh, especially when you're this early in, is what I'm saying. <laughs> in a nice rough and roundabout way. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to the water side of things. Uh, this is going to make the video a bit longer, but I feel like putting the second painting of the water into this video makes a lot more sense than breaking it up into another one. The four main colors that I use for the water are just phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, uh, yellow ochre and cadmium yellow. Oh, and titanium white, of course. Using that yellow ochre into your blues uh, is a really interesting effect because it still gives you that nice green, but it sort of flattens the color out a lot, um, which is really, uh, which is really interesting to see. Well, at least for me, <laughs> I find it really interesting to see is uh, when I'm using that alongside the cadmium yellow type of mixed in 
because you always want to have greens in your water because there's green in the water, no doubt about it. <laughs> um, uh, whether that's by reflection or whatever, I don't know. I just paint it. <laughs> um, but I find that that flattened out green from that yellow ochre is really interesting um, to use, utilize alongside the cadmium yellow. Yep, again, using that uh, oiling out technique, making sure everything's nice and oiled out, uh, utilizing that bottom layer like I've been doing this entire time. Uh, if you've missed that, we I paint <laughs> in... I paint in a way which each layer goes towards the next layer. So every layer that I paint goes towards the next layer on top of that. Um, and that oiling out sort of technique really uh, helps bring those layers together in a way where you can sort of utilize a uh, mixture of um, blending, I guess you suppose you could say it, but also the way that you can apply the paint onto a slick down surface is, is really interesting as well. Um, so I really recommend trying that out if you haven't heard me talk about that enough this video. <laughs> Again, working my darkest, uh, darkest-ish darks uh, to lightest and working furthest away to closest is my main working process. As you can see here, working from the back, working from uh, what's further away from me, then coming down to what's closer. Um, I find that that's a really nice, easy, simple working method for myself. A lot of this first part of this footage might look a bit odd is because I didn't tune the camera to um, sync up with the lights that I have in the studio. So it's a bit rolly, a bit um, a bit shuttery. Uh, so by that I, f I fixed that halfway through uh, when I realized that, but what can you do? It's done now. <laughs> Sorry if you hear a lot of birds or animals around. It's the afternoon, so people, the well, animals are getting about their last order of business or whatever they do <laughs> before they clock off for the night. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you're gonna hear a few birds in the background if you don't already. So you can see how I utilize that sort of slickness of the oil on the surface to put down my paint in a way which is um, not just brushed on, but sort of slick, slickly applied. Uh, I don't know how to describe that properly, but that's kind of the gist of it. <laughs> oh, and uh, yeah, I am using that smaller flat brush, if you couldn't already see, <laughs> um, in this process again. So I've ditched any of the uh, larger flats uh, for, the, for the remainder of this painting. Um, and we'll, you'll constantly see me working smaller brushes, smaller brushes, as I refine. Um, not only does that put me in that mindset of refinement, um, because you, you could refine technically with bigger brushes, I suppose, but it'll, your job would be a lot harder for yourself. <laughs> but it, not only does it put me in the right mindset of, okay, I'm refining things, but it also just practically helps, you know, to to go from bigger brushes to smaller brushes. Instead of starting refined first off, like you're gonna double your work time if you're gonna start refinement first off. And not only that, you're gonna mess up a, a bunch of things when you don't, it, it's harder to map out things if you go refined first off. And your colors don't look as nice if you go straight refined, no underpainting, no nothing. You go straight onto the canvas and you start painting. What you're gonna get is just a lot of pigment on a canvas and it's gonna be, the canvas is gonna absorb all of that, you know, and it's not gonna be these nice rich layers and it's not gonna be these nice rich colors. Uh, so you wanna avoid doing that and work in these layers so that your colors can stay nice and rich and stay nice and vibrant and essentially not have to be staring at the canvas texture with a bunch of colors on it. Instead, you're looking at a painting on top of a canvas, you know, you, you know what I mean when you've seen, just go straight in one layer, um, one layer wonder, and <laughs> that's a good term, I'll, I'll, I'm going to coin that one, one layer wonder it into uh, just one painting and then they say it's done. You'll see a big difference between paintings that do work like that and paintings that work like me or other artists that work like me and you'll see the intensity of their colors and the way that the uh, paint layers sit on top of each other. 
um, all works in this really beautiful unison way. Keep that in mind when you're working your painting. That's essentially the whole uh, psychology <laughs> and practicality of working in layers is that each layer works for one another and then the refinement comes each layer. And that is why I'm using this smaller brush. <laughs> we got there in the end. That was a real long roundabout way of saying why I use that smaller brush, hey. <laughs> you heard me say it earlier in the video um, that I prefer uh, watching real-time painting, uh, stroke for stroke, and I prefer to give that. It is really handy to use a mixture of both, I find, and see how I bring things together as a whole, sped up, and so you can see me work things, rework things, and things really come to life. Sped up a bunch, like 400 or 500% sped up. <laughs> what I find so handy about that is being able to see how me as the artist uh, showing you guys how I work is that you can see a lot of the way that I think and the, a lot of the way that I move things around the canvas and position things and rework things and see the picture come together as a whole rather than what it was um, rather than seeing how it slowly comes together I think that's such a vital thing for the viewer to see because me as the artist, I know where I'm going. I have it in my head. I can see everything unfolding before me. You as a viewer, you don't have that, that map in your head like I do, obviously, while I paint this. So I, I feel like this sped up version really gives a real sense of it all, uh, bringing it all together so that you can see that sort of roadmap and that, and that uh, overall working of things. Uh, that I get to see in my head. Throwing in the last couple of touches of this uh, second painting, I just wanted to say thanks again. Thanks heaps for watching uh, all the way through. I really appreciate it. I hope you got a lot out of this video. And I'll see you in part three where I finish it all up. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please uh, hit a like, comment, share subscribe, uh, all that good stuff uh, really helps me out. Uh, I just really want more people to see these types of videos that I'm going to make. Uh, hopefully this video brought a lot of value for you. Uh, hopefully part one, part two and the next part is going to bring even more so value for you uh, in your painting journey. Um, so I'm Zach Hampson. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.